We have a fun afternoon evening planned. My dearest friend Dan invited me down to the river. The last time we fished the river, I think we caught 13 or 16 different species of fish, and one we didn't catch was the lake sturgeon. Oh, yeah! Hey, <laughs> Can you hold them? Hold this for a second, Dan. I'm oh. Yeah, maybe some walleye, sauger, white bass. They may not be quite as aggressive, but the sturgeon bite through the ice, and when you hook one, you know it. Got him. Got him. Yes! It's good to have friends that know about bites. <laughs> yes, this is slimy good. high fives. Slimy high fives. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, here we go, Jer. Boom. So Spons what we've away. got is. Uh, fishing on a river, there's current. So it's a whole different program. So we've got the current kind of going this way. So we have holes over here, here. The big ones on the end are double 10 inch holes because these sturgeon get big and they're hard to deal with. So when we hook one, we'll have a better chance of landing them. And then in the middle here, we're jigging because as you can see on the depth finder, there's life everywhere. There's white bass, walleye, sauger. So we've got jigging holes in the middle and as big of a fan of a jigging wrap as we are, like we saw on our show in the fall, they, j they just dance so much. So they, they'll tangle the lines. So a nice straight kind of up and down rattle spoon is a good option. And this green's a good color, but um, yeah, so we're just kind of jigging. And what's cool about all this new technology, whether it's 360 or live, is you can see how many fish are down there, right? And the size of the fish, there's buffalo, there's walleye, there's white bass. And the more you're, you get familiar with it, you can start to figure out what these fish are. But one thing you can't mistake is a big sturgeon. This is really cool. You know, we would normally have, um, depending on the current, you might have to have your flasher set up way over there to see the jig because it might sweep it down. But we've got Mega Live and the, the cone is wide enough that we can see the line of holes that we've drilled here. It's also wide enough that it's picking up our baits as they're swinging down, down current too. So right now we're, we're jigging with jigging spoons to see if we can get whatever else. And then we've got the big boy sturgeon sticks over here where we're ready to do battle with one of these prehistoric giants. So all we're doing really is just soaking. It's just, you know, hooking a sinker here, a couple fat heads. On the bottom, I just took an egg sinker here and made that glow in the dark and then have that little VMC hybrid treble, a size three, and then a little cork and a bobber stop. And this is just laying on the bottom. And I have not done this before, but Dan and his buddy Joe out here both said it, it's pretty crazy when a huge sturgeon comes by, the bite is just that, that bobber is just barely, barely moving. So we're just keeping a real close eye on the on the cork waiting for any signs of movement on that and we'll just lift up start to reel and hopefully do battle but the idea is the sturgeon should bite at dusk and into after dark and hopefully we get a little more action with something else in between but either way if we catch nothing besides the big sturgeon they'd still be happy hopefully you just get one magnum dan that's what i'm i'm here for one interesting thing on the river is there's always fish swimming around but it seems that first 45 minutes to an hour in the morning and the last 45 minutes to an hour in the evening right as that sun's going down which is not uncommon for walleyes but that's really the window to catch fish on the river hopefully a sturgeon but even even into the night you know seven eight o'clock is between seven and eight is a good time so we'll hopefully be here when the bite window happens all right we're gonna let this guy go and hey it's a good start All right, Dan, Joe. here we go. Joe's the hot stick. Joe's got another one. All right, here we go. Joe is hooked up in the fish house next door. Let's see what we got. Surgeon on. Well, that's pretty cool, Joe. So you saw him for a little bit on the yeah, we on the bird, and then he, he was he was down there. He was down there at least three minutes before you. Wow, is that huh. cool? Joe was in the house next door. He was talking about how he'd been seeing one. And then it was like, he said three minutes the thing was down there and then bam, hooked up, so. This isn't a tiny one, Joe. No, it's a nice fish. Yeah. Joe, talk about like the technique you're using to fight it. Like you're using your hand on the line and. Yeah, well I let the drink, if he goes to run, you can't stop him. You just gotta let him, let him pull. But, but you gotta remember every, right now he's just gonna do circles. 
and every inch you can get from them, the quicker you're gonna get them. Like right now, you ain't no good. But you gotta go all the way down, like you're saltwater fishing almost. Keep working them up, reel all the way down. You're not really pumping very hard, but you gotta keep, keep your nice even bend to it while you're fighting it. There he is. Oh, there nice he is. One. Oh, great, oh, yeah. oh, great fish, great fish, man. Yeah, you want me to Great fish. Oh, get that there. Get him in. Oh, oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Come on, girl. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just a tangler spoon, and they'll stick it. And one other thing I like to do is do a double split ring off the spoon. So it gives me more flexibility when I'm fighting that fish, so I'm not fighting the spoon. Keeps well, you from pulling them out while they're twisting. And the other nice thing, it gives you something to do to pick those knots out of the double split rings. When you're yeah, it sure one. does. <laughs> Give everybody else a chance to get back down before me. Oh, she clean? Yep. Well, congratulations, man. That is fantastic. Right. Yeah. Whoa, that is what we came down to do. Oh, wow, slime time. The great sturgeon feel. Yeah. The cousin of the shark. Gotta love him. Look at that tail. So cool. Dan's got his set of buddies here. We've got Joe next door, and then Joe's buddy John next door to that. So we're kind of all in a line along this break here. And we kind of figured that if we set up these three houses along this break line, somebody was going to fire. So it was a little pandemonium. We heard, Joe, oh yeah, we're on. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's not a big one. And then, of course, like sturgeon off and do. They go from, ah, nothing special to, oh yeah, it was, that was a nice fish, so. All right. Good job. Number one on the ice, guys. On the board, Joe. On the board. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, Got Jer! Him. Hooked. Hooked up. Hooked up. And yep. there's still one down, Jer. There's I'm, still one down there. Man, I'm tempted. There's two. We've had like three come You're, through in two minutes. He's going this way. I'm going to keep he's mine still, down Dan's for a still, minute. There's still another one down there. I mean, That's the power of like having cool sonar technology like that. It's not just, you You know how many fish specifically are down there. It's so cool that you can see him come through there. Fun. I, I can't tell you how big it is to have a hub house. You could do this in a flip over, but if it was cold, you'd have to open up the door to be able to, or the house, the shelter to be able to maneuver. This is pretty sweet that we Gosh. can. Here he is, Dan. He's already here? Yep. He's, okay. not, he's, he's nice, but he's not. All right, here, let me give you Gigana, a hand. Giganto. Oh, yeah, no, he's pretty big, Jer. <laughs> yeah. Well, bigger than anything else, you're going to catch ice fishing, right? Oh. Yep, there we go. Here, get him up and we'll get pecs. Yeah. Yay, Sturgeon! It's pretty wild that uh, just a couple minutes ago we had one of the, I just, I just dumped one of these. Dan, there's another, there's another one down there. We're actually like on a school. We're on some schooling sturgeon right now. Oh man, all right. This doesn't happen very often. The February ice fishing blues, ha! when it's tough to catch just about everything, we just landed on a sweet bite. We are fishing with glow in the dark stuff. I mean, their eyes relative to their head to their head aren't very big, but you can see like these frilled nostrils that they have, and then along with barbels, their their senses are so keen for dark environments. And then I just my favorite part is their mouth, and this is called a proboscis. Is what this is. They call it, you can see their mouth comes out, it protrudes like that. It's a really cool feature of these fish, but look how streamlined they are. Their bottom is just completely flat. Peck fins are absolutely huge. I mean, these are just super sleek machines for cutting through river current. Absolutely stunning. And then look at their gills, that deep maroon color they have. I'm just in love with these fish. They're so, so cool. I love them. And I'm going to let him get to be huge. See you, sweetie. Love it. Love it, love it. Wow, Jer. A lot of slimy high fives tonight. Could actually be a Pope and Young. 
Yeah, so I'm excited to see these. These is, things are amazing. Oh, that, cool. that's a good one. That is so that's, cool. That is such a cool deal. There's the infamous mud puppy. Look at, look at the morphology of these things. Mike and I were reading Mate. about this on the way down. I think there's, there's a number of different species, but an amphibian that spends its entire life cycle in the water. Their gestation period was crazy. It was something like these things, they mate in the fall and they don't lay eggs until like June and then the eggs don't hatch till like August. And they don't reach maturity until they're like six years old. So people catch these things and discard them on the ice, but they're actually a sign of good water quality. They're native to this place. So these things are a good thing to have around. And look at, you can see they're not like a tiger salamander that we would have native to the Midwest. They would have just a, a you know, more of a straight tail, but this tail is clearly adapted. It's like a burbot tail, almost burbot modeling for swimming in the water, external gills. I think these things are so amazing, Dan. Look at their eyes, very, very small eyes. But... All right, we're gonna say goodbye they, to this guy. They know. We're gonna send him, point him in the right direction. Now he knows where to go. It's amazing how they find the water. They must smell it or something. He'll go right down in. Well, we appreciate you coming to visit, bud. That's pretty cool. Look at how he's gonna swim. Boom. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> Joe's we're the hot going. stick. Joe's got another one. Ah. You got the hot stick, Joe. Bigger one. Definitely a bigger one. All right. Too many fish I seen on the grab. It was. I got that out. Here, take All right. Really oh yeah, see that big head shake? <laughs> this is a good one. This is the one we wanted to see. Oh. Ooh. Man. You can just tell when you get a big fish on. Sometimes it is. Uh, a different world. It's gonna be a workout. It's pretty cool that you you see him on the graph like oh, that. Oh man! So I'm telling you, he came way up above this uh, mark right here. He was all red, solid red, all the way up here, and this was all solid red. I don't know. You know, maybe he was. Sometimes they'll tip their bodies and put the tail up with the head down, and you don't get a true reading. But other times you can tell by the head shakes here too, and he had some shakers. There's a, it's pretty cool, you know. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed this, Joe, but one of the things that uh, we've seen, like when we fished them on the rainy river in the spring, is that you can be a, a cast length off, or your anchor position can yeah. be zero fish, or one after the other. And we've only seen a couple, and you're just basically what would be another boat anchoring position Away. over, and you're on a lot more fish. That's that's yeah. pretty really pretty interesting. Oh, oh, there oh, he is. There he is. Boy. It's just like that. Oh, it's just a funny hook. Yeah. Just a, huh? just a good attitude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he just had a good attitude. It's great. There you go. Hey. <laughs> hey buddy, you're yeah. as big as My dancing partner. Yeah, I right. love it. <laughs> Look at oh, that I double split he... ring. Tingler spoon in the mouth. Oh, Joe, like, what's the... Oh, go go in the dark. The UV green quarter ounce. And the thought is so it doesn't sink in as much, right? If you're yeah, so uh, a sturgeon uses its eyes. Like, you know, as much as you talk to anybody who spears them, you know, they got decoys and golf balls and cups. They look for it. So they, they see this bright, big flash. Plus, this one tapers down nice so that if he sucks it up into his mouth, you don't have nothing getting in the way of the hooks. It's all hooks. You know, if it was the other way around, it'd be different and pull, pull all probably easier. So it's got a nice shape. When it hits bottom, it doesn't sink in um, to the mud. So if it's soft bottom, it kind of spoons and holds it up out of there too. If you just drop it down with a sinker in the mud, it might just go, you know, and go right in. Joe, you are a sturgeon hey. master. That is so cool. That is a thing of beauty. Off she goes. Right, Joe! He's still there. You can still see the bottom. Yep, he's still on. He's right underneath you. He's right underneath you. 
Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, he bumped it. He bumped it. Got him. Got him. Yes. 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 All right, I I'll reel up. Yes, that was awesome. Okay. Came through from Dan's side. All right. Yes, Jerry. <laughs> yes. That's not all bad. Sturgeon. Oh, man. So this one, Dan, I don't know that I got him in the mouth. I just saw, so Dan's telling me that anytime the bobber moves, real, you know, it's not like you're slap setting. It's not like you're doing a, there's slack in the line and then you hit them. You want to just, I just started lifting. I grabbed the rod, I started lifting. The bobber moved and it was weight, so I Well, yeah, that's all and, you can do, you know, your ice But look at that. So this is obviously not traditional walleye gear. This is stuff, if you lake trout fish, it's your lake trout rod. I mean, it's bigger, bigger gear. I've got a 3,000 size reel on. This is the Apex Predator, St. Croix's big, big dog rod. You can see it's a great stick. It's, it's like, this is a perfect stick for doing this type of thing. Absolutely. You want that flex? I'm gonna tighten up a little bit. Here, why don't I get over here, Jerz? Are you yep. good with the heater on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like being warmed in. Yep, I just don't want to burn your line. And so I've got suffix 832 and 20 pound, so it's not a um, crazy heavy line, but the, if you've got a good reel with a good drag, doesn't matter. But I actually spooled this up with the full 150 line just because it's a good you call. don't know i mean that, that really you could get a fish that's a hundred pounds when you're doing this and it's possible that that sucker runs and you're going to want all the capacity you've got you don't catch big fish through the ice in very many places so it's pretty cool to have an opportunity to do this Chance the wind off here. your back here we go oh whoa he came, oh, he came through the wrong oh, hole no. oh jared it's a nice one it's a nice here. one i'll uh if you um I don't want to get back. Uh oh, what's oh, no. going on? Oh, oh no, is, is he on the Mega Live? He got caught in the transducer, yeah. Okay, oh. we got him. Okay, are we good? Right. We're good. Here we go. All right. Up. Dan, why are you so scared of the. <laughs> I don't like getting hit in the forehead with a, with a bullet sinker. <laughs> I put my glasses on. You got him right in this. I did get him in the. Yep, he ate. He ate. He it. ate. He ate that. Oh, well, here I am. All right. It's a nice one. It's a really nice one, Jerry. Okay, I'm going to stand back up. I, if you're going to get him, I need I'm going to get him, and I'm going to go maybe this way with him. Okay. See, the line keeps cutting in. Oh, he's right there. Boom. Yeah! Star John! Big old Sturge, Jerry! Uh, yes! Look at that, that's fantastic, man. That is super, super awesome. Yes! yes. Total success. Hey, this opportunity does not happen everywhere in the ice belt, but where it does, Great Lakes, a select number of rivers throughout the Midwest. You should give it a try, man. What a fantastic, fantastic thing to do through the ice. Wow, wow, Oof. wow. Let's get ourselves a little pliers here. All right, you want to pop them out for me, my friend? There, you bet. That is super cool. Super, super cool. These fish don't have bones. They've got cartilage. Their bones are exhibited in their scutes, which are more obvious when they're younger, which run along the lateral line here and then in the, the back, so they can basically touch their tail to their nose because it's all cartilage for their nodal cord it was their spine and they're, they're related to sharks they're prehistoric they're not available in every every lake and every place throughout the, the ice belt but where they are available seasons are now open in much of minnesota we've got uh, opportunities to fish for lake sturgeon wisconsin there's opportunities and throughout the great lakes region these guys can be fished for they can be caught and you should go out and get your ice fishing gear full of sturgeon slime <laughs> one of these days because they really are awesome. It'll be the biggest fish you ever catch through a hole in the ice.
Thank you, Dan. Absolutely, my right. pleasure. It's this good is... to have friends that know about bites. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thing of beauty. <laughs> Sturgeon slime. Yeah, slimy good. high fives. Slimy high fives. <laughs> oh, thank you. 